comments to the agenda? Yes, Jamie? One. Uh, there's only needs to be one executive session for personnel, not two. Okay. So I'll get rid of the second one. All right, any other adjustments? Um, I think we'll just try and keep things running smoothly. So I don't think we'll assign specific times to anything. We don't have a particularly busy agenda here. Um, so move on to item four, public comment. Do we have any public comment? I don't think we have any public at the moment. We'll move on to the consent agenda. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes of Tuesday, April 20th, 2021? So moved. I'll second that. Any discussion? I would recuse myself from that. Okay. Who opened it and who recused? Uh, Peggy. Peggy recused herself. Um, okay, so. Lisa seconded. Sorry, I got to take two. So, yep. Was it? Okay. All right. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. So we have approved the minutes of Tuesday, April twentieth. Move on to board comments. Do we have any board comments? I've got. I got. Two, I guess, maybe questions. Uh, um, one is, you know, I guess with the COVID stuff, uh, and we're now in the spring with seasonal allergies and stuff. Uh, what's the what's the guideline again to families on on like what to do with their kids if they have allergies and are sneezing and have runny noses and stuff? Uh, uh, what's the What's the protocol, I guess, just to remind people about it and stuff? Really to work with the students and to coordinate. The nurses are getting really good at knowing their students and the families, and they'll help you best navigate that. And then they connect with um, Shane. If we have a, you know, the, they connect with the local pediatricians, both at Gifford and at the, you know, our pediatrician's office right in town. So. I would say school nurse is the best point person. Okay. Yeah, I mean, our, I mean, personally, our daughter had to stay home a couple of days because of a stuffy nose for allergies. Uh, and I thought we had put it on the forums that she had allergies, but the nurse said she didn't have that. And we explained that it was allergies, but then we still had to go to the doctor, I guess, and get a note saying that she does have allergies. It was either that or the COVID test. So, um, and once that's on, that doctor's notes before me. Okay. And so then I guess my second question that I had too is, I guess, you know, we're getting to the end of the school year and, and getting into next year, but, you know, families are already starting to have to fill out forms and stuff for next year. Um, at one point, a year ago, maybe two years ago, you know, I asked if we could maybe try to find a way to, to go to like a digital process for filling out all the school forms. Um, but right now it's still on paper. And so I just wonder if there's anything that we can do to maybe streamline paperwork for families. Uh, I know for us having three kids in the school next year, having to fill out all those same forms over and over again, gets a little tiring. Um, and I'm just wondering if there's a more efficient way to do it that makes it easier for families and probably easier for you all too for tracking if you're doing anything you know digitally versus having to enter all that data in that's been put on sheets manually right uh chris that's in the budget but not until july 1st so you probably saw a kindergarten form which is still on paper hope to have an update for you by the middle of july awesome Uh, do we have any other board comment at this time? Uh, 
All right, then we'll move on to the uh, reports of the board. Jamie. Uh, good evening. Um, I hope you all got outside today and enjoyed a little of this wonderful weather. I have not yet, but I plan to tonight. Um, so anyways, uh, I would let folks know, I mean, as I said in my board report, I mean, this, this time of year, schools just wind up. Um, they don't wind down. And so we're in the thick of hiring. Um, I have committed to interview every finalist um, that works for the organization. So any new person we bring on, I meet with. And so I will meet with new teachers, new paras, certainly, of course, uh, new administrators. And uh, I do know that the special services uh, director committee has forwarded a finalist for me to interview on Friday. So that's good news. That information will come out, excuse me, in the SU board packet. Um, we have successfully completed all of the budget process other than first branch. So Tara and I are navigating that. Um, and then we have a big vote happening today in Stockbridge because Stockbridge had a uh, reconsideration vote in regards to whether or not they might they want to still continue to pursue moving forward alone instead of in partnership with Rochester. So those are some of the things going on across the SU. I had a delightful two hour meeting with your principals this morning. I'm really excited about the direction of the organization. And um, I think there's really uh, exciting and bright days ahead uh, for RUD um, as we look to really continue to beef up our proficiency work, our, our personalized learning, our pathways. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of groundwork being laid. As I said in your report, the amount of teams that you guys, uh, your administration and faculty have proposed to get together over the summer is pretty amazing. Um, and our recovery funds are gonna allow us to fund that. So um, our recovery funds are being uh, specifically focused on uh, making certain that you know, we have high quality PD, that we have intervention in place, specifically math. We didn't have math intervention in place in any of our districts for target intervention. So we're looking to focus on that. Um, and so uh, there's just, there's a, I think a real great excitement this time of year to look forward to what we're gonna be able to really, really roll out next fall. And if you have any questions, I'll entertain them. Um, I'd be curious to see the amounts proposed for the um, ESSER three or whatever grants for, you know, just so that I can conceptually know like what scale of, of PD we're talking about compared to what we've funded in the past. And, you know, just be curious. Like, yeah, we can roll out what those figures look like. I think we'll roll that out across the SU board to the SU board, Andrew. Because uh, that money came to the SU, and we're kind of strategically implementing it across the SU. So once the ESSER two grant is submitted and approved, it's submitted. I'm waiting for approval. I'm happy to roll out where those funds are going and the percentage breakdowns. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions for Jamie? We'll move on to the principals then. So I think I get to kick us off. We uh, had a exciting teacher appreciation week, which we tried to celebrate everybody who works in the school. Um, so sorry, there's side people talking over here. They're not supposed to be in my meeting. Uh, <laughs> anyways, so, uh, and we're working hard on filling a bunch of vacancies. Um, and I think that the thing I'm gonna mostly report out on is our goal number one, which is that we are excited to keep on leveling the playing field and we're gonna have elementary, middle and high school go to the summer best altogether and keep on working on uh, aligning our systems, which is something we kind of talked about a little bit last, last board meeting with like, there's a hat rule here and not a hat rule there. So we're gonna keep on having those conversations, which sometimes hard to have during COVID times when you're not always allowed to be all around each other. So that's goal one. And I've got goal two. Um, we just finished up an intensive period uh, about started back in February. So uh, a good solid three months of working on our continuous improvement plan. 
That's a document we send to the Agency of Education annually uh, that includes uh, very specific mental goals for improving student reading scores, student math scores, uh, working on flexible pathways and a few other goals, kind of looking at data about our school, what's working, uh, what's not uh, where we want it to be, and and how do we make uh, make our best efforts to make some changes that'll make an impact on that. Uh, the continuous improvement plan is uh, kind of at the SU level to be submitted to the Agency of Education. There's a kind of feedback process there, but we expect that at our August meeting, we'll be uh, bringing that back to you for your approval and, and kind of talk to you about some of the details of that. <clears throat> uh, there are also equity goals uh, specific to that, uh, where we're looking at uh, specifically students' uh, academic performance who are uh, qualified for free and reduced lunch, and how can we target uh, special supports to help raise their achievement levels. Thank you. Uh, the other huge uh, that we've wrapped up in the last month is uh, identifying work that can be done by teachers and staff over the summer to make some headway on some of our goals here. Um, and we submit to you a, a link on the report uh, of all of the summer work teams uh, and what their objectives are. Thank you, Reed. And on goal three, <coughs> I get to talk about that first, but the three of us will add things here. This is um, the one about community outreach. And pandemics really, um, you know, clipped our wings on this, but now we're ready to go back and start having events and outdoor stuff. And I'm gonna leave the, the principals to talk about where it's happening with them. But, um, and I will be reporting in the middle. We're gonna go through this chronologically by age. Andrew, you're up. <laughs> uh, so it's not quite all the way open up. So we're bringing Vince to us for our end of year field trip for both campuses. We're really excited to have the opportunity to have Vince come to us and to do something at the end of the year when we maybe usually are used to going on field trips. Uh, planning field days for both campuses. Can you pan down, Ray? Maybe not. Oh, you. Um, and then I think we're also doing some moving up ceremonies in house. Uh, so not opening it up yet to to maybe having people come in, but uh, want to celebrate our fifth graders as they get ready to launch into into middle school. So you know, cake. It's all about the cake. And finally, I think just this week we I wrapped up mailing out our welcome to the new babies in our communities. So I mailed a board book to every baby born this past year that was listed in the town report. Um, and I got, I think almost all the elementary people to sign it, uh, to sign the welcome letter. So hopefully people are receiving those. That's a great um, activity that you do, Andrew. And I'm really, I wish I lived in your town when I had a little kid. Um, so my piece in the middle school is there's a, a lot of bulleted items there and I encourage you to read them all. I'll highlight one, but this is, we had the Tarrant Institute, uh, interview some middle school students and find out how the pandemic learning was for them. And we got some great feedback. Two things I'd highlight is students were talking about having less classes per day and longer blocks of time. And that created less transitions and it was easy to remember for them. And then the concept of working in projects and uh, was really, really important to them and student voice and choice because we worked with students, the teachers did, and negotiated the curriculum. This is a researched uh, thing that middle schools and other schools do. It's kind of the constructivist educational model of construct the curriculum or learning together, including the assessments. And those are usually done in presentation mode. The other thing I would point out is kids didn't like being pulled from classes. And this is, I know music to all the educators ears of like, they don't wanna be highlighted as being pulled out for more. And I'd love to change that culture, but we want to push in more than we pull out. And, you know, I'm just so proud of the teachers that they they were 
helpful in like saying, yeah, let's ask the students what, what works and what doesn't work. So it was really some nice meta assessment of our own programming. Really proud of them. Thanks. And Reed, you're going to talk about the high school. You're muted. We had a pool going. Reed, you're muted. Sorry. We uh, we are in the middle of Spirit Week right now. Today was Twin Day, and tomorrow we have Color Wars, where each grade dresses up. Uh, in a different color, and we're having our spring carnival uh, tomorrow afternoon with fun and games outside, um, including a special menu from the cafeteria, which we're excited about. Um, and uh, capping off Spirit Week is our prom this Saturday at the Grand Ballroom at the Hanover Inn. So we're uh, collecting votes for the junior and senior court today. We're going to have a junior court and a senior court and two kings and queens um, due to COVID. Then uh, the, you know, this event is being made possible by uh, our junior and senior parents who started to organize a couple weeks before the governor's announcement uh, and have been raising money. Uh, and at this point, we're about halfway to our fundraising goal of being able to pay for the, the whole event through parent donations uh, kind of taking the off of, of the classes for having to pull all that together uh, so it's gonna be a lot of fun and looking forward to that um, we are moving forward with graduation plans for June 12th um, and uh, you know constantly changing guidance but uh, we will have the tent on the green and that's all said it's more a question of uh, how close people can sit together and how many people we can fit under the tent uh, to de which will determine how many tickets we can give out to each family. So, um, and uh, just a last little update. Uh, if you've been on campus in the last week or so, you've seen it looks a lot nicer thanks to the efforts of the uh, high schoolers who are out doing their green up day of service. Uh, they painted almost all of the outbuildings on the athletic fields. Uh, they did a lot of gardening in our courtyard internally, and then the front entrance and our rear parking lot areas of the school got some extensive landscaping. So uh, things are looking up and looking great. Thanks. I think I say that's our report. Questions? <laughs> now we'll entertain questions. Anybody have questions for the principals? All right, well, thank you. It's good to hear about these things that are going on. Um, okay, Tara, we're on to you. Thank you. So you have my report. I'll give you a few of the updates. Um, as Jamie mentioned, we have submitted our ESSER 3 application. We're waiting on approval for that. Or sorry, ESSER 2. Thank you, Jamie. I was working in SR3 today. Uh, we have completed our pre-audit with the auditors. They wrapped up in the office on Thursday. We are scheduled for final audit the first week of September. And then on school food responsibilities, continuing to do the monthly reimbursements through the summer food service program and for our school buildings that were awarded the fresh fruit and vegetable program, we're working to get the plan for the centralized food service for next school year. And then back on April 20th, the USDA extended, all children would continue to eat breakfast and lunch for free. And that will be through the seamless summer option. So that will take into effect on in October because summer food service goes through the end of September. So none of our programs have used the seamless summer option. So we all will have to go through training on what that means and how that all works and everything in comparison to normal food service or summer food service program. On your revenue and expenditure summary, I've updated the COVID reimbursement on both the expenditure and revenue side from 8,568 to 7,113. And we'll continue to see shifts as we move expenses out um, based on the coding for the grants. 
And then I reduced your health insurance overspending from 45,000 to 29,815. That was due to some of the individuals that have left mid-year. We've increased the supplies and book savings from 103,337 to 152,358. I added savings in staff travel to, of $10,127. And then I added savings in the professional services of $75,720. On the revenue side, only other update I made was to your interest income. And that was just based on the last month's reconciliation from 2009.80 to 4,090. So those changes result in an increase in the expenditure surplus from 300,808 to 452,315 dollars. It increased the revenue deficit from 99,400 to 99,746, resulting in an overall projected surplus of 352,570 dollars which is an increase from the March projection of 201,408. So your faculty, staff, and administration continue to do a fantastic job. And then if you have any questions, I will attempt to answer them. Oh yes, and the Finance Committee had our first meeting. Do you have anything for Tara? All right, thank you, Tara. Definitely great news about the surplus. That's great work, everybody. Yeah, just thank you. Okay, um, Energy Committee. Chris, my man, you're on. Been working hard. <laughs> So, yeah, um, yeah. So I guess we have uh, the SU Energy Committee, um, and I've been, uh, I guess, gladly elected the the chair of that uh, committee. So I get to, uh, so we meet on the what second Tuesday, second Thursday of the month. Uh, so um, we got the electric utility bills for all the campuses or all the the schools around the district, or or not the district, the SU. Um, and I've been putting all the data into a software called Portfolio Manager that's put out by Energy Star and uh, uh, and looking at the last two years worth of utility data, both electric and heating oil um, pellets for Sharon because uh, they have a wood pellet boiler. But then uh, I guess we're going to add to it uh, the propane for cooking uh, at the different buildings. And then we're also going to look at water usage. but uh, looking at the electric usage, I guess I can maybe, I don't know if I should share, I can just give the info. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, right now, looking at the two campuses uh, between Royalton and Bethel, um, on average, uh, you know, we're spending more money. Uh, or, okay, right, turn it on where I can share. So, um, so this was just some initial data where I sort of gathered some info on uh, on building square footages, uh, uh, but then in each of the tabs, I've got the electric and and oil information for each of the buildings. But uh, and then I'm going to get updated area information from uh, from Jamie. But uh, you know, Bethel is roughly 56,000 square feet, and Royalton's building is uh, roughly 71,700 square feet. Uh, but on average, over the last two years, on average, the average monthly electric kilowatt hour usage for uh, Bethel has been 20,872 kilowatt hours a month, whereas Royalton is 19,054. Uh, I added this in today, actually, the average monthly cost. Bethel's, uh, you know, their, their sort of average kilowatt hour rate that they pay out when you factor in demand charges and stuff, they actually pay a little slightly higher rate than what uh, Royalton pays. So they're paying about 18 and a half cents a kilowatt hour when you factor in demand charges and stuff. Uh, whereas Royalton's effective rate is 16, 16.73 cents a kilowatt hour. Um, 
So, but so on average, you know, roughly Bethel's electric bill is about seven hundred dollars a month more uh, than Royal Ten, and then on a square foot basis, you know, Bethel is using more electricity uh, than Royal Ten. Um, same thing with heating oil too. Um, Royal Ten's using a little bit more overall. Uh, over the last two years, we've aver- they've averaged just shy of twenty nine thousand gallons. Uh, and Bethel is just shy of 28,000. Uh, Royal 10 this year is actually up over, uh, this year is bigger than last year. They're already up over 33,000 gallons of oil for this year. Uh, but on a square foot basis, again, it's a, about 50 cents a square foot for oil uh, to serve the Bethel campus and about 40 cents a square foot uh, for oil to serve Royal 10. Um, you know, here's a plot of just what the monthly electric looks like for Bethel. Uh, the orange line is their demand. So we, we pay part of our bill is we pay for the actual kilowatt hours of usage. And then we also pay for the peak demand uh, that occurs. Uh, and that can be, you know, occurs anytime during the month, but whatever that highest kilowatt draw that you ever hit, you, in, you, know, you pay for that. And right now we're paying about $18 a kilowatt uh, for those demand charges. Um, and and we do peak up at around close to 90 uh, kW in the in the during the year, um, and then for Royalton, let me click on it. And then here's what it looks like for Royalton. Um, so you know, both campuses drop off in the uh, in the summer, and then they hit their peaks in the winter time. Uh, you know, the Royal 10 is interesting that it peaks each time in the, like the January time frame, which is, you know, I guess one of the colder months, I guess it's right before the students go on February break and stuff. So, uh, but we hit the highest peaks then, and then it starts to tail off um, after that. But, you know, so I think the, the data, you know, it shows that, you know, I think this performance contracting um, stuff that we're going to look at should be good and, and hopefully it, it pays off. I think, you know, some of the renovations that have happened over the years at Royal 10, like with the gym uh, addition, but some of the rework that occurred as part of that, you know, helped, you know, with some of the energy efficiency in Royal 10. But I think both places have, uh, you know, room to grow. And, and that's what we're we're looking at is looking towards the future. and and making those numbers smaller. So, and then, you know, as other part of the committee stuff, uh, although I guess I got to, I mean, this is one of my, on my to-do list is to email Jamie about it. But uh, uh, one thing we'd like to get for next meeting is to maybe identify prior to the next meeting, identify maybe a, a teacher at each school to to get in contact with to invite to the next energy committee meeting um, and just start to come up with some initial ideas for next year about ways to get students involved um, at all the different campuses around the SU but uh, but for us you know specifically um, you know in Bethel and in, in Royalton ways to get students involved in thinking about energy and energy use. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Does do your figures include the? Uh, I'm assuming so, uh, Royalton still has the solar installation on top of the building. Yeah, the uh, the numbers that I just did purely on the on the use side. I didn't get into the production side. Although the production uh, for those panels is uh, is pretty low. Um, I think the and I think the credit for those panels actually gets put over onto like either the baseball or softball field uh, uh, utility bill, which I didn't include those yet either. Uh, any of the perimeter spaces. So like for Royalton, there's the baseball and softball fields. We get uh, we get separate bills on those. Uh, Bethel, there's softball, there's the baseball fields, but then we also get a separate bill for just the parking lot lights, and then they get a separate bill for the sign out front. Uh, that's on its own separate bill. So uh, I didn't add any of those, but uh, uh, yeah, the solar panels on the roof, uh, you know, that's on my to-do list, I guess, just to look at those. Uh, 
but you know the overall production it helps offset the the sports fields energy usage but uh uh but i don't know you know it'd probably be good to get some look at that data and then compare to like what's the size of the array uh that's on the roof and make sure that it's performing i mean do we have any type of service contract on those uh panels or is it just uh or is it just sort of static sitting up there and producing uh, I don't know if anybody knows on that. Raise guys' hands. Yeah, I, think, I don't think the company's in business anymore. The one that okay. installed it or did the monitoring. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so we could look at it. Maybe that'd be something where we can, uh, you know, have a chat with like Betsy Ricker and get her opinion on it too. And, uh, uh, but I know, yeah, a lot of solar companies, you know, they offer service contracts and, you know, there may be an issue with like a, uh, the converter uh, or something uh, in terms of, you know, its efficiency, if, if it's dropping off or if there's some panels that are underperforming, uh, you know, that can sort of have a cascading effect. Uh, so I, I don't know any background on that system, but it would be good to look at it and make sure that it is performing as best as it can. Uh, we also get the separate credit on the bill for, uh, for the uh, solar that we purchased from the solar field that's up on Gee Hill Road. Um, and uh, we pay out, was it, it's like 3,600 bucks a month that we pay out uh, for that. Uh, but then in turn, we get credit on our utility bill. And I've added it up for, you know, for this fiscal year where there's still two months left on it. But from, from last July up through now, the amount of credit that we've gotten so far equals the total amount that we will pay out for the year. So if you take the 3,600 and multiply it by 12, that's how much credit we've gotten year to date. And so the next two months will all just sort of be, you know, the, the gravy on the top, which is that 10% savings that we get uh, with the, you know, the rate that we pay that, that solar company versus what we actually you know, use on our electric bill, you know, that's what they offer us when they come to us with those things is that, you know, we'll pay 10% less than what we would have if we were just purchasing it from the grid. So, so that is, that's working for now, uh, you know, but uh, uh, so I thought that was good to check on too, but yeah. All right. Anybody have anything else for Chris? Thanks for all the work you're putting in on this. It's great. All right. So I guess we'll move on to the policy committee then. Uh, so I sent around to the full board the um, third draft of the anti-racism policy. That's based on the feedback we received from different boards and community members. I met with the consultants, they provided a draft. Dina had a few um, edits. And so this is after it's been proofed by Dina. Um, and so this now is out to the full board. It'll be on the agenda for the policy committee next week. And it will also be on the agenda for the full board to talk about. Um, so that's where we're at with it. So it, I think we're getting close. I mean, I'm feeling, I know I'm feeling, um, Pretty good about it at this point. So we'll see what other folks feel. So that's our last one for this year, and then we'll launch back up in August. All right. Any questions about the anti racism policy? All right. Lisa, what, Lisa, that uh, just so everyone remembers, sorry, uh, Andrew, the right. full board meeting is being moved from Monday to Wednesday next week um, because the uh, I get a Tumbridge informational meeting on the budget. Um, so it'll be next Wednesday at 6, and the policy committee will be next Wednesday at 5.30 prior to the board meeting. Okay. Sorry, I just want to make certain yeah. that it's out there. All right, we'll move on to the Finance Committee. Um, I guess I'll talk about that. Uh, yeah, we met on two weeks ago Thursday, or 
week before last Thursday. Um, and it was a relatively quick meeting just to go over the um, updates on the projections that Tara had um, put together. And um, we are going, like, we also are going to be looking at the warrants more, um, which had, because of the switch over with uh, how the warrants were being done, they weren't getting sent out to everybody. So they're going to be sent out to everybody again so we can all look at them. Um, but I think that was mostly it for the finance committee meeting. Um, does anybody have any questions about that? All right. So um, we'll move on to Regeneration Corps 8.1. Owen, you want to take a lead on this? We had a nice meeting today. Sure, yeah. Uh, we meet every Tuesday morning, as you might remember. And uh, first, I don't know if we rec uh, welcomed you yet, Peggy. Welcome as the newest board member. Really awesome to see you in uh, another role than, than uh, grandmother. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I knew you were more than a grandmother. <laughs> <clears throat> you may find I'm more than you want. <laughs> oh, stop. You are so lovely with for your with and for your granddaughter. Um, today we met with uh, some folk, a uh, guy from the Regeneration Corps, and this is Lisa put us on to this. Thank you, Lisa McCurry. And there are nine organizations that are in a collective of sorts, and I'm doing my justice here. And we met with Henry Harris, who's one of them, and they're doing work right now at uh, Thetford Academy, Sharon Academy, and Randolph High School. And they want to work with us also. They really like focused right now in our valley. And Bale is part of it. So right in the village. So they want see a possibility of really like working right away with the high school students in the village and doing some stuff. There's an agricultural component. There's a racial justice component. There's a climate justice component. There's five or six big areas they focus on. But what they want to do with is, is work with students in agricultural settings. They're also going to do a site visit at both sites. And they're going to um, see how we might work together as a middle school with us and the FBUD middle schools. And we also thought, wouldn't it be great if we brought middle school kids to South Royalton campus or to the village and meet with bail folks or do some other stuff. But it really sounds like a possibility of a lovely partnership and i'm not sure if any board members are farmers but we would encourage that too and they henry harris who met with us uh met with myself andrew reed and jamie so we had a really uh nice talk and we're followed up right away with an email and we've included some faculty and some other folks from their organization what i miss team it's a nice they're, I mean, they're looking to secure their funding through other grants. There may be an opportunity for me to build them into ESSER um, to help offset some of that incurred costs. We'll see how that plays out. Um, but I really see this as another avenue when we think about multiple pathways for students. Um, I was very impressed with their ability to talk that language too. Um, and uh, you know, I just will emphasize one of the things we were thinking about is, is it's a great opportunity for students from Sharon, from uh, Tumbridge, Chelsea, uh, Stratford, as we look to really branch into more of this experiential and agricultural type learning. Because um, that is something we all have in common throughout this SU, uh, and I would say Rochester Stockbridge too, is to get students to come visit your two campuses. I think that there's a real opportunity there when you think about genuine connection and the idea of recruitment um, of those elementary and middle school students, that this could be a genuine way to, to bring our kids together. So um, we're going to look to to really try to capitalize that on as well. So thanks again, Lisa. I, I did ask them, I said, why haven't you reached out? And it seems like they're just getting up and going, but I'm really excited to, to build that partnership. Yeah. And to, you know, they did, we tried to uh, make this happen last fall. So they've been, they've got a lot of energy and a lot of intelligence and a lot of good organizational skills behind them. Very impressive. And, you know, their information is 
really thoughtfully written. And uh, I just wanted to also plug that as you work on ways to work with them, there is a community garden in Royalton and there's also a community garden that's in its second year in Bethel, just walking distance from the Bethel camp, Bethel school campus. Um, in case there's a need for, you know, some hands-on learning, you know, growing food within, you know, if that becomes a, an interest with part of their curriculum and giving students a place to get their hands dirty. Um, I'm involved with the one on the Bethel campus, or I'm involved with the community garden that's in Bethel. So um, if that ever, if that's of interest, uh, by all means, we would love to have some students involved. And if it wraps in with Regeneration Corps, that'd be even better. Did I make sense? <laughs> it's quiet. Yeah, no, we're all shaking our heads. Sorry, you're taking notes. Yeah, no, that sounds great, Lisa. Awesome. And I do think that that garden piece, especially at the high school this year, so we need that contact. And um, we'll follow up. We're meeting. We're going to have a meeting. So if you could share that with uh, Reed and I, that would be awesome. All right, I'll do that. All right, sounds good. Forward to hearing more about that. Um, okay, so the next thing on the agenda is the summer board retreat dates. I guess we need to pick a time to do our yeah, study. I know you guys have done fall in the past too, is my understanding. I just thought we should go ahead and look at calendars and get these booked. Sure. Um, so, um, just. For anybody who wasn't on the board before, um, we usually do a slightly longer um, meeting in the summer to kind of just go over overall priorities and you know kind of do a longer form dive into subjects that might not get as much attention during the regular school year. So, um, you know, in the past we've had food and stuff at them and but I don't know what the plan is this year, if we'll be doing them in person or remote, or I guess we need to talk about that. All I can say is you need to hope it's not a heyday, because that's where <laughs> I get, <laughs> where I'm yeah. trapped. We can come help, Peggy. We'll have the meeting in the field. <laughs> <laughs> as long as we don't run you over with our bales. Um, I guess, uh, do people have preferences for any particular times? Um, I, I'm going to be away, and I can do a rem join remotely, but I'll be away um, kind of the first couple weeks of August. Would be sometime in the week after like the week of the 16th work for people? Would it make sense to do a doodle pool and float out and then people could check their schedules and then you can see what the has the least ramifications, what can get most people? Yep. Sure. Andrew, are you volunteering to put that together? Absolutely not. <laughs> I, I'm happy to do it. If you give me the dates, I will send out the doodle poll. I could do a cheese doodle poll. <laughs> I just think when we've done them in the past, it's the easiest way to figure out who, you know, who's what date works best. So, uh, Andrew, I heard you talk about the week of August 16th. FYI, I'll, I'll call in from somewhere. So I can't can be there. Be the like a range from, can it be a range from the 16th of August to, uh, I don't know, like 10 day span? Because just so we have some more options on the doodle poll. Yeah, that sounds good. Are we thinking like all day and evening? Could break it into half days choices, I think. Yeah, I think afternoon, evening is probably 
what I, I would be thinking, but do other people have thoughts? Well, if we eat before we go, then we don't in have to spend the money. In the past, haven't we started at like three or four and then we've gone till eight o'clock? Yeah. Yep. Did you Just say- to give people an idea of how much time. Did you say July or August 16th? August. Okay, that's the day Elvis died. I just want you to know that. Okay. You know. Um, and then I guess we could do August 16th. And then when does uh, in-service days start? Kind of at the end of August. I believe they start on, I don't have the school calendar in front of me. But they don't start until the, is it the 30th team? Yeah, I August think the, 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 the front part of the week of the 23rd would be good, but the back part of that's going to be like. Yeah, maybe why don't we say judo poll 16th through like the 25th? Sounds good. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I mean, the 17th of August is one of our regular uh, RUD monthly meetings. If we have an August meeting, we'll have an yeah, August. Yeah, well, it's in the. We're not having a lot, but we'll have August. So, what if it went right into a meeting that night? Is that too much of a day? Yeah, we just have existing meeting. And we, I think we've typically avoided doing the meeting and the retreat the same, you know, combining them. So that we are focusing on stuff that's not kind of regular order of business type Did, things, but. I'm, I'm sorry, someone came to my door and I had to step away for a minute. Um, didn't we usually do the retreat? It sounds terrible when I say it out loud. On like a Friday evening, just uh, like yes, Friday we have done that in, the past. in September, because a lot of people have it free. Um, I don't know that that works for me there's like no other conflicts except for i know to block it out from like social engagements yeah i think we have done in september before but i think that was because we wound up with conflicts in august rather than wanting it to be in september per se um but yeah I'm, i'd be fine with a friday either yeah, like Friday the 21st, I guess we'll, or no. Okay. I guess we can see what the doodle poll says, but. Right. Does anybody else have thoughts about retreat? Fridays are my least favorite night to be out again, but if that's what you guys want to do, I'll do it. But. I would, I'll probably vote against that that specific Friday because I think VTC, I think we start back to class the following Monday. So, uh, you know, something earlier in the week of the 16th uh, would be more to my liking than somewhat than later in the week. So point of clarification, if I was creating a doodle poll right now while you're talking, do we, because we're having a board meeting on the 17th, we don't want to list that as a date or do we do want to still consider starting early for a board retreat? breaking for the and breaking at six or not. I mean, I guess you can have it on the doodle poll and if there's no other date that we can do it, then we'll do that day. Okay, I'll leave it on. Are you making the poll right now? Of course she is, this is what she does. I mean, she's efficient. That's a compliment, Andrew. Yeah, she's she's also doing laundry and raising a child. Okay, well, when that's uh, ready, you can send that out and you can all see what day works best. Um, so check it and send the chat, see if that looks right. I can fix it if it's wrong. Looks good to me. Yeah, looks good. All right. Um, 
So we'll fill that out and have that on the agenda for next month, uh, picking an actual date. So now we'll move on to, uh, we don't have any action items. So were there any resignations or new hires? There were. Do the principals want to go through them or I have a list of them here I can take care of? Me? All right, resignations that I have in my hand uh, are, um, and these are all, you know, we accept them with regret, but, uh, and they're all for different reasons. I just want the board to know that. Uh, both just personal, like, in regards to family changes and all kinds of different things. So, um, uh, Janelle Rule is going to be leaving us uh, to pursue a career at the Hartford Tech Center. Um, so, she'll be leaving the elementary school. Um, Janet Whitaker is going to be retiring after several years of service. Um, do we have any sense of how long she's been with us? A long, long time is my understanding. 31 years in bed. 31, okay. And, and I think several be, more. Yeah, it has to be longer in Bethel because she was teaching fourth grade okay. when I was a fourth grader. I think it's 31 uh, years as librarian. Right. So. And she was the homecoming queen a long time ago, too. Really? I have that picture. I've been waiting for this moment. <laughs> and if you saw the principal's report, we have, we're planning to do a really nice celebration for our staff um, at the end of the year that I'm looking forward to. Um, and uh, Kevin Moran, uh, one of our custodians at the Royalton campus, is going to be moving out of town. Um, and so he's wishing us the best. Um, Claire Epchuk is going to be uh, retiring. Um, she is going to come back and do some part-time work for us in regards to intervention. But Claire, after, again, probably, I don't know, it's at least a few decades. Do you have a sense, read of how long Claire has been with us? It's three years. Is that what it is? I think so. Yeah, it's going to be retiring at the end of this year. Uh, Allison Moreau is going to be moving on. Uh, she's currently working at the South Royalton Elementary School as the kindergarten teacher. She's accepted a different position. And just today came across my desk, uh, Corrine uh, Scopey. Uh, is going to be moving on at the end of this year as the school counselor in Bethel. And uh, Reed, I don't have anyone else in my hands. I don't know if you're in possession of anyone else. but uh, Hannah Romeo uh, will be moving to school counselor role at Hartford High School. Um, and Ingrid Van Steenberg, our uh, guidance uh, ad assistant will be for the tender and uh, one of our special education paraprofessionals uh, who started working with us in November will be moving uh, back to Minnesota over the summer so um, you know as the board accepts those you know with that you know we're we're working hard to um replace folks but we've also started meeting as an admin team to say is there an opportunity here to look at doing business any different in a different way um and so we may you may see as we bring new hires forward that we look to to just restructure some of the things to best meet our students need uh just based on the vacancies and you know just applicant pool and how do we best navigate it to ensure that we have a really strong team moving forward next fall um and so we we did like i said we met for about two hours today to talk about that on top of other things um do we need to formally do anything for the yeah i think you should move and just accept uh with regret you know and just send them all the, their best uh, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to accept them all with regret. I wish them all well, particularly our retirees. 
A second. Okay. Um, any discussion? Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. We've got the those re um, retirements. Or, yeah. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure that I, we probably weren't really clear, but uh, we would love the board to join us on the morning of the 18th. We're having a brunch in, trying to come to kind of together, which is like the first time we've really come together this, this school year as a whole staff to celebrate surviving this year and celebrate the people who are retiring and moving on um, and the newbies who maybe survived their first year. So I know that I've heard that um, people love to have the board kind of present or if one of the board members may be present to at those events so just if any of you can make it we'd love to have you so june 18th that's the morning yep okay yeah can you send out the details as far as time and location can do and just so you know the principals and i are cooking that day we're making the breakfast so you're I think so that's you. quite I thought that's why we're inviting the board. <laughs> no, we're having a throwdown, Mr. Bradley. I've been I working know. on my omelet skills. I'm I'm so good at napkins. Here you go. There you go. It's we're not having omelets. <laughs> it's on the South Royalton campus. We'll, you'll, get the, you'll get the details. You'll get the details. All right. Sure. Since, since we're talking about end of the year events, uh, this will be an opportunity to invite all of you to be part of the graduation on the South Wilton Green on June 12th at 10 a.m. Uh, we will have front row seats for every board member who, who wants to be there. Um, and uh, Superintendent Canardi is going to be helping with passing out diplomas this year, but traditionally, uh, one member of the school board also goes up on stage and hands out diplomas as well if uh, one of you is available and is willing to do that would be great. Okay, does anybody particularly um, would like to do that? I'm happy to do that. That's my son's plan. Okay. What's that, Lisa? You you oh, could. I just said I did it last year, so I'm. I'm if no, anybody has, I did it. But I don't. Okay. I'm I'm happy to help, but if anybody else would like to, I'm I'm happy for that to happen. I nominate Lisa Floyd. <laughs> Okay. Um, All right. I'll 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 put Lisa in the program. Thank right. you, Lisa. And you know what to do. I've just known so many of them since they were babies. So. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Um, I guess we'll move on to the next thing, which is uh, public comment. Do we have any public comment at this time? Still don't have any public, so move on to executive session. And it'll just be the board and I, and it shouldn't take long. Everyone else can go enjoy the beautiful evening. All right, thanks, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night, all. Thank you. So I just need you guys to make a motion and invite me in if you would. I'll entertain a motion to enter executive session. Make a motion that we, yeah, there we go. Sorry. Second. No, no, good. Okay, and we'll invite Jamie. Okay, you started recording. All right, so coming out of executive session at 7.13, um, I believe we've completed our agenda, so. Um, for future agenda, uh, no action. 
No action taken. That's right. Yeah. Um, for future agenda items, we have. What do we have? We've oh, got uh, the final motion retreat. Retreat. Yeah. There'll be a bunch of hires. Uh, just so you know, you get a significant data report next month. You'll have all your local assessment data and your SBAC data. Um, so that would be a huge chunk of the agenda, too. What was that, Lisa? Ah. Sorry, we didn't get that. It is it assessment data you said, Jamie? Yeah, yeah, the uh, all the academic assessment data. Uh, so STAR, Fountas and Pinnell, SBAC. Okay. All right, so that next meeting will be Tuesday, June 15th at 6 p.m. And I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Just want to say up front, I won't be able to make the June 15th meeting. My son's graduating and I have events that week, so I apologize. All right, thanks for letting us know. And I'd make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> we'll second. All right, thanks everybody. This might be All a right. record Good for night. fastest meeting. <laughs> yeah.